The oceans give life to our planet and to us. Around the world, people depend on fish as a source of food and income. But in the past few decades, we have come to realize there is a limit to what we can take from the ocean. It's not just the quantity, but also how we catch our seafood that forms the problem. Destructive and wasteful fishing practices are decimating fish populations and destroying ocean habitats. With around 80% of fish stocks in trouble, species driven to extinction and ecosystems on the brink of collapse, it is time to rethink how we harvest our oceans. I'm Port Orford, Oregon fisherman. Been here for 35 years. Uh, started fishing when I was 10 years old with my dad. And now I've moved up to where I've got one of the biggest boats on Port Orford Dock. Among other species, Port Orford fishermen catch Dungeness crabs. But they are quite selective about the ones they keep. When we go fishing, we pull our crab pot. And then the crew goes back behind that and takes the females out. They go back over the rail, and anything that's not six and a quarter inches long or wide goes back over the rail. All we harvest is a six and a quarter inch crab that goes into the life tank. So we've always got a return of eggs are hatched every year, and everything hunky dory, <laughs> I guess. Thanks to their fishing method, the fishermen are protecting the crab stocks as well as their own future. I believe the fishermen themselves have to put their effort into sustaining this fishery. Therefore, we can have a fishery on down the road and keep this livelihood going like we got going. The Dungeness crab fishery along the west coast of the US forms a stark contrast to how most of the world is catching its seafood. In the North Sea, cod stocks have been depleted due to relentless overfishing. In the Mediterranean, northern bluefin tuna are on the brink of collapse. Frustrated with the slow progress in fisheries management, environmental organization Greenpeace is now reaching out to those deciding on the seafood that ends up on our shelves. Retailers are really in a power position when it comes to fighting for sustainable seafood. Um, and I think we want them to use this power for a more sustainable future of the oceans. They want fish for the future um, and they want it long term. And this is why we think they are the right partners for us to work with. We experienced in the first place that retailers were not very aware of the problem. Um, so we presented a lot of information to them um, to create a basis where they were able to act from. Um, from on that point, we saw a lot of rapid movement, we, we saw a lot of concern also. We, you know, people were shocked. They, they had not heard about this before. One retailer who needed little encouragement is Marks & Spencer in the United Kingdom. It has developed its seafood policy over many years. We had uh, a, an approach to seafood sourcing where we would check all of the sources of fish that we would buy. It became a little bit more formal when we started having a banned list in our first seafood sourcing policy. We then progressed to starting to engage with industry and our suppliers, talking to fishermen, bringing them into our stores, talking to government, and trying to do a little bit more to influence change for the future because we were concerned about the long-term future of wild fishing. As part of its campaign, Greenpeace has drawn up red lists of seafood species which should be avoided by both consumers and retailers. It has also created ranking guides judging supermarkets by their seafood sourcing policies. So what is happening, in fact, is that the ones at the bottom of these ranking lists, you know, they want to find out from us, okay, so what can I actually do to get away from the bottom? And at the same time, we've had retailers calling us up and to say, okay, what other little kind of change can I make to, to get to the first place? And I think that's, that's really, you know, a, a very nice movement that we have seen over the last years. Greenpeace is asking retailers to take a few important steps to clean up their shelves. Firstly, they should stop selling species featured on Greenpeace's red list. Secondly, 
retailers should establish exactly which species they are selling and research how and where these have been caught. Thirdly, they need to develop their own rules and criteria for sustainable sourcing. These should include, for example, not sourcing from overfished stocks or from destructive or illegal fisheries. Finally, retailers should clearly label their seafood and provide information about their policy, allowing their customers to make an informed choice. One of the retailers who responded strongly to the Greenpeace initiative is Kaufland in Germany. In the last two years, the whole sourcing process has changed because we very different the articles, test them, which fish are sustainable, from which fish are they fished, with which fish are they fished, fang method are they fished, is it an aquaculture? Wie sieht die Aquakultur aus? Wie wird diese bewirtschaftet? Also der gesamte Einkaufsprozess hat sich seitdem gravierend geändert. Unsere Grundeinstellung hat die Greenpeace-Kampagne nicht verändert, aber sie hat geholfen und dazu beigetragen, nachhaltigen Fischfang entsprechend zu implementieren. Und die Zusammenarbeit mit Greenpeace hat sehr gute Hinweise gegeben, wie, wie und wo wir uns noch verbessern können. Und wirkt natürlich auch auf den Kunden positiv, der wesentlich sensibler mit dem Thema Fischeinkauf umgeht. Arguably, only few well-managed or sustainable fisheries that are also economically viable exist today. But the fishermen of the Maldives are setting a positive example. Around the world, skipjack tuna are usually caught through purse seining, a method resulting in bycatch of young fish and non-target species. But the ancient technique of pole and line fishing used in the Maldives is a selective and therefore more sustainable way to catch tuna. Only fish of a certain size are caught, leaving the young to grow to spawning age and replenish the stock in the future. Most of the fish caught in the Maldives is also processed here, providing the country with crucial jobs and income. We hope that people in other countries will realize that we are doing something for the sustainability. And we hope that one day we, people will pay more for our fish. But today, the reality is we get the same price as per sand fisher, fishing and polar line fishing. There is no difference. In the end, we will have no choice. If we want to run the factory, if we want to do this, we have to go for what everyone else is doing. Just go for the per sand. Fish forever distributed by Organica Real Foods in the United Kingdom, is one of the brands marketing the Maldivian Poland line tuna in Europe. Its managing director, Charles Redfern, believes retailers should take a greater responsibility by promoting sustainably produced seafood. They just say this is a buying option. And that's the wrong way to go, because you're basically saying that these are lifestyle choices, that ethical decisions are lifestyle choices. And they're not, they're critical choices about how we want our products, our food to be produced. So I would like to see the retailers um, maybe being less neutral about this and actually working very hard to push it and not just say, look, we've got it well right, but nobody's buying it. Marks and Spencer now uses Poland line caught fish in all its tuna products, including salads, sandwiches and cans. I think our business has got a great deal of benefit from committing to sustainable sourcing. We know customers are coming to us, to Marks & Spencer, to buy fish because they trust what they're seeing on our shelves. They don't have to carry guides, they don't have to be experts in fishery science. They can come through our doors and buy a sandwich or a fish pie or, or a fillet of fish. Any seafood at Marks & Spencer can be bought with a clear conscience. The Kunden würdigen unser Engagement im Fischer Einkauf und in der Nachhaltigkeit und das Feedback der Kunden ist extrem positiv. Also es hat uns sehr angenehm überrascht, wie, wir, wie selbst auf Auslistungen von Artikeln seitens der Kundschaft reagiert worden ist und Umsätze deswegen haben wir nicht verloren, sondern eher gewonnen. We have seen um, developments of seafood sourcing policies all over the place. We have seen a lot of delisting of threatened species. But um, I think what is perhaps the even more important um, factor is how the results are now um, spreading um, in the whole market and to policy. So fisheries are experiencing that they just can't sell their products anymore if they're not being caught in a sustainable manner. 
By removing the worst, supporting the best, and improving the rest of the fisheries, retailers can truly change the fishing industry. Their choices, along with those of politicians and consumers, will determine the fate of the world's fisheries, as well as that of our oceans.